Good evening and welcome to the October 26th regular meeting of the City of Arcadia's Planning Commission. We are holding a meeting as a webinar in response to local efforts to reduce the spread of COVID-19 virus. If you wish to make a public comment during the meeting, there are two ways. If you are on your computer, when the commission is discussing the agenda item on which you would like to speak, click the raised hand volume, um, icon, raised hand icon. When the public comment period opens and it's your turn, you'll get a notice when the clerk unmute you, unmutes you and you'll have two minutes to comment. Uh, if you are on the phone, you can also join the meeting and comment by calling the number uh, and meeting ID, all of which are on the bottom of this screen. Uh, press star nine to let the clerk know you wish to speak. When the public comment period opens and it's your turn, the clerk will unmute you and you'll hear a prompt. So you need to listen for that and you'll have two minutes to speak. Uh, this meeting is now officially called to order. Director Loya, can we get a roll call? Uh, absolutely. Uh, Commissioner Figueroa? Present. Commissioner Davies? Here. Commissioner Tegney? Here. Commissioner White? Present. Uh, Commissioner Barstow? Here. Vice Chair Mayor? Here. And Chair Said Alcock? Uh, you're muted, Chair. Here. <laughs> and at the staff's table, we have David Loya, Director of Community Development. Um, I don't know if we have Joe Matier. Is Joe or Dilo here? No? No, we uh, have uh, the Director of Environmental Services, uh, Emily Sinkhorn, and the Deputy Director of Environmental Services, Emily Benvy. All right, welcome. Okay, so let's move to oral communication. This time is provided for people to address the commission or written or submit written communications on matters not on tonight's agenda. At the conclusion of all oral or written communications, the commission may respond to statements. Any question that requires commission actions will be set by the commission for a future agenda or referred to staff. Is there any member of the public who would like to address the commission on something not on the agenda? There are no members of the public. No, okay. Um, uh, well, the consent calendar, the only item we have on the consent cal calendar tonight is our October 12th minute. Does anyone need to pull that item or can we get a motion to approve? Um, I'd, Commissioner Mayor? I'd like to pull that item briefly. Okay. What are your concerns about that item? Um, it, it's, um, something that I think applies to several uh, version, versions of the minutes. And I've noticed that um, these minutes have quite a bit more detail about the public comments than our minutes typically have. And I think there's, there's a, a protocol um, issue that I'd like the commission to discuss, perhaps not right now, but um, maybe in communications later about the level of detail in the um, minutes about public comments. Um, and I, I'm, I pulled it now because um, we're being asked to approve it as is. Um, I'm, I'm okay with that tonight, but um, I think we actually need to talk about um, how the minutes address um, public comments in planning commission hearings um, and get a sense of how, what we want to see in terms of consistency. Um, so I'll, I'll just uh, close that and I'll actually make a motion to approve um, these minutes when you're ready for that, but would like to um, make sure that we discuss that that protocol issue. Commissioner Tegney? Yeah, small clerical error on the minutes. Um, on the public hearing items, the wrong person is noted as chair. On the roll call. That too. <laughs> Okay, so do we want to make a motion to approve the minutes as amended and then perhaps we can 
discuss this down under uh, commissioner communications towards the end of the meeting. Director Loya, does that sound like a plan? Um, yeah, I think amending the minutes, uh, you know, I'm, this is, I'm almost certain a minute track holdover. It's part of the software that handles our staff reports. So we'll fix that um, with a motion to adopt as amended or approve as amended. Um, but I think to have any kind of substantive discussion about the um, content of the minutes, we would need to agendize that. So I can put that on for a future agenda. Ken, I'm wondering if we can discuss that during the um, communication uh, part of this meeting, since it doesn't necessarily require um, any voting action. It's basically a, a protocol item um, for staff communications with the commission. Um, I mean, I'll leave it to the chair. The My understanding of the communications uh, portion of the meeting is that it's intended for, uh, you know, brief uh, communications relayed from one party to the other. Uh, sometimes there's a little bit of back and forth, but you're not really intended to have substantive discussion about the merits. Um, so I'll leave it to you all if you decide to, you know, pursue some, some sort of discussion about that at the communications, um, or I can agendize it. Let's agendize it. Let's do that. And then, so do we have a motion to approve the minutes as amended? I think, um, Commissioner Mayor, you made a, did you make it first? Yeah, I'll, I'll move to approve as amended. Um, and that for, for now, the amendment would simply be to change the name of the chair for that meeting. Do we have a second? I'll second. Who was that? White. Okay, so we have a first by um, Commissioner Mayor and a second by Commissioner White. All in favor, um, um, can we get a roll call, please, David? Uh, Commissioner Figueroa? Aye. Commissioner Davies? Aye. Commissioner Tagney? Aye. Commissioner White? Aye. Commissioner Barstow? Aye. Vice Chair Mayor. Aye. And Chair of State Alcock. Aye. Okay, motion passes. And then we'll agendize that um, going over how we want the minutes recorded in the future for a future meeting. Okay, so we have four resolutions to consider this evening. Uh, the first is PC 21 03, finding that the donation of a conser conservation easement over a portion of AP 503 206. 271-028 is in conformance with the general plan. Before we open this to the public um, hearing, do we have any commissioners who have an ex parte communication to disclose? Commissioner Davies? I need to recuse myself from this item as it uh, has to do with my, my personal property. I think the um, second agenda item uh, deals with your property, um, Commissioner Davies. Oh, I thought it was the first. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's right. It does. Um, yeah. So what I would recommend is a an agenda modification um, because yours is the, the second item. And I would suggest taking this agenda modification as a, you know, as a vote to move the second item to the end. And then that way you can participate in the first three. Okay. Okay, oh, that's what I understand. So we're moving the second one to the fourth one. Okay. We need a motion on that, though, right? Yeah, I'm just making a note. Okay. Okay, do we have a motion to um, amend the agenda? I move that we amend the agenda. We have a first by Tangney. Do we have a second? I second. Who, who said right. that? That oh, was Davies. Uh, Commissioner Figueroa? Aye. Commissioner Davies? Aye. Commissioner Tegney? Aye. Commissioner White? Aye. Commissioner Barstow? Aye. Uh, Vice Chair Mayor? Aye. 
and Chair Vasid Alcock. Hi. Let me just make sure I understand, um, Commissioner or um, Director Loya. So the second one is going to be okay. So we're still moving forward on on the first one, the PC twenty one dash oh three. Okay. All right. Um, so we don't actually have ex parte communication right on this this first one, Davies, because his is the next one, right? Where he needs to recuse himself. Yes, and that, that one was moved to the end, so he won't need to recuse until the very end, and that way he okay. can. Okay, so um, thank you. Can we get a staff report on PC 21-03? Uh, sure, good evening, um, Chair and Commissioners. I'm Emily Sincorn, Director of the Environmental Services Department, and we have four different hearings for you to consider for potential conservation easements and acquisitions. Um, to support multiple benefits for the city. But here um, before you today for consideration of conformance with the general plan. And so for this first hearing, um, staff recommends that the commission adopt resolution PC 2103, finding um, the donation of a conservation easement over a portion of APN 503-271-028 in conformance with the general plan. Um, so just for more information, the city has really been looking for opportunities through acquisitions and conservation easements to support habitat protection um, and really reduce development impacts directly adjacent to the community forest. So I have a couple slides just to provide some visuals. Hopefully you can see this in a second. Um, so this is just a visual of the city's current forest land owned in fee, the Arcata Community Forest Tract, Sunnybury Tract, and um, the Jacoby Creek Tract. And the city has um, already pursued, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. The city has pursued um, conservation easements as a tool. Um, and so I wanted to talk about what a conservation easement is. So it really is a voluntary legal agreement that permanently limits the type of development or resource use on a property and really intended to protect its conservation values. Um, the city only works with willing landowners for this. Um, the landowner retains the fee title to the property and then grants the conservation easement to another entity um, to really maintain in perpetuity and monitor that um, easement in perpetuity. And so these terms of the easement become part of the property deed and run with the land. Um, and these easements can be structured in different ways. And we'll talk about those for the two kind of today. Um, but the city has existing conservation easements directly adjacent to community forest land and many that you may have um, are aware about or have traveled through. The Samuels Conservation Easement um, has public access as well. Today, um, for these before you, we're just considering a conservation easement and not public access. Um, but the, there are several adjacent to the community forest so far, both um, in the Arcata Community Forest and um, Jacoby Creek Forest. And so again, some of the benefits of conservation easements is it's really an opportunity to maintain um, habitat and conservation values without additional land acquisition to the city and therefore associated costs and long-term maintenance or adding properties to our non-industrial timber management plan. Um, it really is a tool to buffer the community forest from potential further development, parcelization, um, and habitat loss. And then also another benefit is visual aesthetics being directly adjacent to public access trails in the forest. So that's just a bit about conservation easements in general um, with the city. And so this item before you is about one property in particular. It is owned by Lisa and Tom Bethune and it is zoned a rural estates um, in the unincorporated county. And they're really looking at offering a donated conservation easement over a third of their property. Um, and there are several other conservation easements that both the, the city holds as in the previous um, slide I had shown um, and uh, other parcels adjacent to the forest that um, there's another that is owned that is a uh, 
the conservation easement is held by the Jacoby Creek Land Trust. So this kind of is an area where there has been development um, adjacent to the community forest and there's a benefit, even if a conservation easement is small to retaining that buffer adjacent um, to the forest. And so for this um, parcel, I just wanted to show a couple photos um, from this parcel. It is a redwood and spruce overstory and definitely has habitat values, even though um, is uh, about a little less than an acre. So I'm just going to stop sharing that real quick, but just wanted to give an overview um, of the property. Um, staff has really determined or really recommends that this action is consistent with existing city policies and the general plan, the um, open space plan, and the forest management plan. Um, and really supporting open space and ecosystem functions continues to be a city council goal for this fiscal year. Um, and we also um, deem that this action of accepting a conservation easement would be categorically exempt under the California Environmental Quality Act per um, class 13, which is really based uh, or, or um, is regarding acquisition of lands for wildlife conservation purposes and um, class 17 really for accepting easements for maintaining open space um, values. So that is a bit about um, the property and I would be happy to answer um, any questions that may assist with your findings. Thank you. Does the commission have any questions, follow-up questions? Yes, um, thank you, Emily, for that. And I'm wondering if the city has any responsibility to the property once the conservation easement is in place. Oh, thank you for answering that question. So part of our process will be um, completing a baseline conditions report so that we have an idea of you know, what um, development is on site, um, habitat characteristics, um, and that really will serve as a baseline and inform us for a regular monitoring of the easement. Um, I am very interested in our department establishing very clear um, monitoring schedules for all of our properties. And so this um, conservation easement would be scheduled for regular and consistent monitoring um, and therefore reporting and communications with um, the landowner, landowner to ensure that actions on the property are consistent with the conservation easement um, language. Are there any further questions? All right, I, I just have a couple of questions. I thought I knew what a conservation easement was exactly, but just, so who who maintains the property? Does the, the um, property owner have to continue to maintain it? Um, who has like liability or, and then who, um, like if, what about like, are the public, do they have access to it at all? Yeah, great question. So conservation easements can be structured in different ways. For this conservation easement, um, there is not discussion of including public access. And so, um, you know, the city has um, a conservation easement with public access and many without. Um, and so this would be one where um, the, and again, the landowner retains the ownership of the parcel is responsible for the overall upkeep and, and maintenance of the property in conformance with the agreements that are laid out and agreed upon in the conservation easement. So for example, and, and we're still um, drafting the easement language with the Bethunes, the um, current landowner at this property, um, but it is envisioned to uh, be similar to an existing easement that was um, the DeFord conservation um, easement where, um, in particular, tree removal is um, is really only limited to hazard trees or checking in with the city for any um, larger tree removal above um, a certain uh, DBH or a certain uh, size tree. 
Um, so that is how this easement um, will likely be structured. And so the city's responsibility um, is really just monitoring to be in concurrence with the easement agreement. Well, if there are no other questions by um, the commissioner, can we let's open this to public comment? <coughs> Excuse me, are there any members of the public who would like to comment on this item? There are none. None, okay. And we will close the public um, portion of that. And then um, do we have a motion for approval? Someone like to make a motion to approve PC uh, 21-03? I'll move to approve it. We have a first by Commissioner Barstow. Do we have a second? Second it. Second by uh, Commissioner Figueroa. All in favor, or can we have a roll call, please? Yeah, Commissioner Figueroa. Aye. Commissioner Davies. Aye. Commissioner Tagney. Aye. Commissioner White. Aye. Commissioner Barstow? Aye. Vice Chair Mayor? Aye. And Chair Vasado? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Okay, so our, let me just make sure I have my act together. So our second resolution tonight is PC 2105, finding that the acquisition of nine separate parcels. Um, too many parcels for me to list here is in conformance with the general plan. Uh, so we're again, we're on PC 21-05, we skipped ahead. So we, do we have any commissioners with an ex parte communication to disclose? No, okay. Can we get a staff report, please? Sure, hello again, commissioners. Um, so this resolution before you regards the potential acquisition of um, open space and agricultural land in between 101 and South G Street within um, the city limits. Um, and would love to have your um, discussion on findings for this um, potential acquisition being in conformance with the general plan. I'm going to share a screen again. Hopefully you can see. So again, these are nine parcels um, about um, all of the, the acreage is a little over 87 acres. Um, it is zoned agricultural exclusive um, within the city limits. Um, this has been an area that um, the city has uh, really seen um, as an opportunity for potential future acquisition. Um, and these parcels recently um, were placed on the market and that opened an opportunity to have discussions um, with the landowner for potential interest into entering into negotiations with the city. Um, the city council has approved entering into negotiations. Um, and that is again why we are before you um, today. Um, these uh, properties, and again, this acquisition, we feel would be um, extremely consistent with our general plan and um, open space plan, um, and also kind of stormwater master plan. Um, this is a parcel that is um, has uh, wetlands, um, this, let's see, yes. The parcels are really mapped as wetlands in the US Fish and Wildlife Service, National Wetland Inventory, and they're hydrologically connected to Lower Butcher Slough. Let's see, oh. Um, and this parcel really could be strategic for not only ensuring our open space values, but thinking of um, future sea level rise and adaptation planning um, for potential um, eco levies or other um, strategies um, to really be part of the city's overall sea level rise adaptation planning and really thinking of, um, of our properties along South G as um, sea levels rise. Um, uh, the property is currently used for grazing um, and there are also are outdoor um, advertising. And um, we really see in the short term, the city being able to manage this property very similarly to 
um, the properties across 101 on the east side of 101, the Jacoby Creek, Gannon Slough wildlife area that the city um, has three different leases for grazing um, and has done a lot of restoration projects. So really looking at um, the um, continuance of open space values, um, wildlife um, benefits from grazing for uh, many species on the Pacific Flyway um, and opportunities for um, restoration activities. So in the short term, we feel that that could be managed in a similar way um, with uh, potential future sea level rise adaptation planning opportunities. So again, the um, staff feels that this acquisition would be consistent with the general plan and categorically exempt under CEQA um, per class um, 13 around acquisition of lands for wildlife, um, class 17 for acceptance of easements or fee title for open space values, and also sec uh, class 25 for transfer of ownership in the interest of land to really preserve existing natural conditions. I'm happy to answer um, any questions you may have again in your um, deliberation of findings. Thank you. Do any commissioners have questions? Oh, Commissioner yeah. Mayor. Hi. Um, yeah, for first, um, yay. Um, and <laughs> um, and and uh, second, just a, a little bit of detail. Um, is, is this acquisition um, going to go before the public ag again with the city council at all for comments from landowners on South G and South H? Um, and second, um, Right now, of course, the, the current version of the general plan um, doesn't take into account the imminent um, Im Im imminent local coastal program um, amendments. And I'm, I'm wondering um, what will happen uh, with the local coastal programs treatment of of um, these properties, that I, I guess I guess that's a funny funny way of saying yes. I think it's definitely in 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 conformance, but um, it it even more emphatically creates a peninsula effect with South G and South H, and so I'm wondering um, how the the plans coming up in the near future are going to deal with that and whether um, the city council is going to hear additional um, comments and potentially objections um, to this action. Yeah, I will first just share that the uh, potential for entering into real property negotiations for these nine parcels did go before the city council on July 23rd. So that was during um, open session for um, you know potential comment and discussion. Um, and then um, the any potential future acquisition, which um, again may be um, will really be contingent on determining a fair market value for the property and um, securing funding, which is will most likely be grant funding. Um, and so there will be opportunities um, when kind of those pieces are, are coming together, um, the city council will would um, accept um, the acquisition or potential acquisition at a public um, open session as well in the future. And then for your second question, um, especially around the local coastal program updates, I believe Director Loya may be best fit to answer that question. Yeah, uh, thank you, Director Sinkhorn. Um, the you know the local coastal program, as you're aware, um, Vice Chair Mayor, uh, is currently undergoing an update. Uh, we've looked at some of the coastal zoning ordinance uh, over the course of last year. Uh, in segments and we're kind of making the final push on the uh, land use element, the portion that would be 
uh, embedded in the general plan and then also the, the coastal zoning ordinance, which we'll be bringing back over the course of the next couple of months. And if I understood your question correctly, it's how does this acquisition comport with or how does the uh, that LCP draft treat this property? Um, and in terms of the sea level rise uh, adaptation objectives that uh, uh, Director Sinkhorn outlined, um, I think those are real consistent with the, uh, the proposed draft. Um, and at this point, you know, the uh, you know, the sea level rise strategy has been sort of envisioned as a, um, you know, a, a, you know, measured retreat strategy that would, um, you know, work with the conditions on the ground at the time, you know, and assess, uh, you know, changes. So I don't think that there would necessarily be an immediate shift from, you know, the, you know, open space lands, grazing lands, et cetera, to all of a sudden immediately, you know, open waters. Uh, that's not the proposal. Um, so I think it's it's still consistent with um, you know the the planning that we've done, and I don't think the city's acquisition would uh, trigger an immediate change to some other type of habitat. Uh, but I do think it's critical for our long term uh, planning effort, um, you know, for for adaptation. Could, I hope I, I addressed your question. I'm not sure yeah, I understood it fully. Yeah, you did. Could I add um, one more question to it, which is. Um that get given the fact that this um, acquisition would uh, make the nine parcels a city property in fee um, is is there a consideration of of rezoning that to um, coastal natural resource rather than ag exclusive and I, I know that that goes beyond the action that we're being asked to take tonight but I, I think that it's mm -hmm. um, kind of an important an interesting and important question. Yeah, I mean, we we certainly have to take that up, I and mean, we haven't done any analysis. Um, the the baylands, I believe, right now are all uh, zoned AE, and it really just depends on how we manage them. Um, but we can certainly consider uh, zoning in the rezoning in the future. All right. Are there any further questions for staff, Commissioner Tegney? Yeah, uh, once the city acquires the property, is there consistency with the general plan for the city of Arcata be, to be the um, renters of outdoor advertising, particularly in wetlands? Yeah, um, the, let's see, I'm just gonna, um, the outdoor advertising often comes with a time period of, of a lease. And so the I am not recalling what the time period is for these three. Um, they're like three double billboards. Um, but the city may be able to um, allow the lease to run its course and not renew. The city council could choose to renew it and have additional revenue. Um, there would likely want to be review of or just analysis of consistency with other parts of the general plan. Um, or if there was um, adequate funding, um, the city may be able to buy out um, the remaining years of the lease that would really need to be determined um, by the with the city council and the intentions for the property, but there would be several options the city could take. Thank you and I and I want to also add that I think it's a thrilling purchase it, it's fabulous to see the city acquire that property. And I hope it has a higher purpose in the future than cows and outdoor advertising. So thanks for your work. Are there any further questions or should we open this to public comment? Um, Director Loya, is there any one member of the public who wishes to comment? There are, is no one in the audience that wishes to comment. Oh, okay. All right, so um, the public comment period is um, now closed. If we don't have any further questions, is there someone who would like to make a motion to approve the PC 2105? Commissioner um, Mayor? Uh, I move to um, approve resolution PC uh, 2105. All right, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Uh, 
We need a second. I'll second. Commissioner Davies. So we have a first by Commissioner Mayor and a second by Commissioner Davies. Can we get a roll call, please? One more time. Uh, Commissioner Figueroa. Aye. Commissioner Davies. Aye. Commissioner Tagney. Aye. Commissioner White. Aye. Commissioner Barstow. Aye. Vice Chair Mayor. Aye. And Chair Visade Elcock. Aye. Motion approved. All right. Uh, okay. For our third public hearing is resolution PC 2107, finding that the acquisition of AP number 505-251 and 011, as well as a partial public easement over 505-251-013 are in conformance with the general plan. Again, do we have any commissioners with the ex parte communication to disclose regarding this item? Okay, can we get a staff report, please? Sure. Good evening, commissioners. My name is Emily Benvy, Deputy Director of Environmental Services. Um, I will start with the staff recommendation and then I'll jump into specific location and context. So the staff recommendation is that the Planning Commission adopts resolution PC 2107, finding the acquisition of APN 505-251-011 and a public access easement over a portion of 505-251-013 adjacent to the Arcata Marsh and Wildlife Sanctuary in conformance with the general plan. So to provide some context, I will share um, the image that was, or the map that was incorporated into the staff report. This parcel in bold is the subject parcel the city is seeking to acquire, which is 2505251011. Um, on the Eastern border, there is an existing wetland setback. On the Western border, there is an existing city of Arcata ingress egress easement for public utilities. That easement you'll see um, by looking at the hashed line extends all the way to nearly Samoa Boulevard um, over the adjacent parcel 505-251-013. Both of those parcels are currently owned by Humboldt State University. And so the city's intent in acquiring the subject parcel is to um, allow future protection of open space, uh, recreation, um, habitat, and uh, wetlands mitigation, and sea level rise adaptational options. So while we don't have a specific plan for the parcel, that's the list of um, considerations the city is, is currently considering uh, to be redundant there. Um, I also want to point out that the public access easement was a condition of approval from the McDaniel Slough project um, from years ago, but the city has not fully met the condition um, due to the lack of site control. And so Humboldt State University has indicated their interest to um, sell this subject parcel to the city as well as include a public access easement um, to be added to the existing ingress egress easement. Um, the last thing that I will point out is the city completed or had a wetland delineation completed um, prior to moving forward with this parcel appraisal. And the, for all intents and purposes, entire parcel is um, uh, covered by wetlands ranging from one to three perimeter wetlands. And so I bring that up because the appraisal has determined it's largely undevelopable, um, which is noteworthy considering the parcel is zoned for uh, industrial limited uses. It really isn't feasible to develop the parcel with those uses. Um, the acquisition is consistent with the general plan, the open space plan, as well as the stormwater master plan. And it is categorically exempt from CEQA guidelines under class 25, which is transfer of ownership of interest in land to preserve existing natural conditions. And I would be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Do any commissioners have uh, any follow-up questions? Okay, seeing none, are there, oh, Commissioner um, Tangney? Yes, thank you, Emily. Um, I'm wondering then, I'm not quite understanding about the coastal access opportunity that has been discussed in the past. 
Um, as I've tried to hike through there, there's a lock gate right near the HSU industrial property. Um, however, further down right at the slough, there's a gorgeous bridge and it, it's counterintuitive. Like I'm not sure if we're supposed to be in there or not supposed to be in there. Um, and what's the prospect here in the future after Arcata purchases this property? Will it change? Yeah, so you um, certainly identified uh, the on the ground conditions not exactly feeling ex consistent with the existing easement conditions for sure. Um, and so yes, the city is seeking to uh, essentially open that up for public access, you know, it may be being used as de facto public access uh, currently. Um, so the city's hoping to formalize that and while we don't have specific plans at this point because that may that would would likely um, require Caltrans approval as well as development of some sort of parking area. So that isn't currently the plan, but by securing access as part of this acquisition, we can set the stage for that future work. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Okay, seeing none, are there any members of the public who have questions? Uh, the hordes are still being held at bay. <laughs> okay. You're muted, Chair. I don't remember what I said last, go. but do we have a motion to approve a PC 2107? Commissioner uh, Mayor? Yeah, I'd like to move also to approve um, item PC 2107 um, and um, this this is a long time coming yeah do we have a second I'll second okay so we have a first by Commissioner Mayor and a second by Commissioner White can we get a roll call please Commissioner Figueroa aye Commissioner Davies Aye. Commissioner Tagney? Aye. Commissioner White? Aye. Commissioner Barstow? Aye. Vice Chair Mayor? Aye. And Chair Sade Elcock? Aye. So motion is approved. All right. So now we're going to our fourth and final public hearing item, and Commissioner Davies needs to recuse himself. So you can just take the rest of the night off if you want. Yeah, how's this gonna work, David? You're welcome to either turn off your sound and video and sit out the uh, proceedings and then jump back on when we get to communications or if you'd like, you can just leave the meeting. Totally um, how will I, uh, well, what do you recommend? I wanna make sure I do the right thing. Uh, either one is perfectly acceptable. And so I, um, I just need to turn you'll, off. you'll be able to hear. Sorry, turn off my video and video and audio. OK. Correct. And we'll invite you back in when we're done. OK, so um, the fourth and final public hearing item this evening is PC 2104, finding that the donation of con uh, conservation easement over a portion of AP number 500-011 Dash 007 is in conformance with the general plan. Uh, before we open this public hearing, do any commissioners have an ex parte be communication besides Commissioner Davies? No, okay. Um, all right, can we get a staff report, please? Good evening again, commissioners. Um, so our staff recommendation um, is for adopting resolution PC 2104, finding that the donation of a conservation easement for um, this parcel would be in conformance with the general plan. Um, so this again would be a donation of a conservation easement adjacent to existing city owned Arcata community forest land. And I'll we'll just set our stage again with, um, again, this is a map detailing existing conservation easements the city holds and um, the two proposed easements that we've discussed in the two hearings today. 
Um, and so this easement um, in question is this larger um, orange 80 acre parcel. Um, and this parcel um, is owned by uh, Commissioner Scott Davies and therefore the recusal. Um, and so again, the city is interested um, from hearing from willing landowners interested in working with the city to um, place a conservation easement on their parcel for um, protecting of habitat values and other values um, adjacent to city forest land and open space land. Um, and so the city council um, has already approved entering into negotiations for um, this, for a, a conservation easement over this parcel back in February, 2020. Um, as we see, just as this is more of a, a close up, um, as we discussed um, in the first public hearing tonight, their uh, conservation easements can be structured in different ways. Um, and the interest from this property owner is structuring the conservation easement to allow for sustainable timber harvest with um, the idea that active forest management can help shift um, the habitat and forest structure towards more of an uneven aged complex um, forest and heading kind of with active management really try to assist um, in speeding up um, retaining more old growth characteristics um, in the forest through active timber harvest um, and selective single tree um, selective harvest. And so this would be an, an east conservation easement uh, agreement structured a little bit differently than in the first um, hearing we uh, heard tonight, um, but it would likely be similar to the type of conservation easement um, that the city holds over the Samuels conservation easement um, in the north of adjacent to but north of the Arcata community forest. Um, also, um, the again the um, easement area and language details um, will still be are still being worked out and we're seeking um, your findings on conformance with the general plan. Um, again, we feel that our staff um, sees that this conservation easement would be consistent um, with the existing general plan, um, the forest management plan and open space plan and that um, this action would be categorically exempt under CEQA um, per class 13, class 17, and class 17 um, related to acquisition of lands for wildlife um, conservation purposes and um, the acceptance of easements for retaining open space character. Um, I am happy to answer any more questions about um, this uh, particular hearing before you, and thank you. Thank you. Do we have any questions? I see Commissioner Mayer. Hi. Um, sorry, sorry for having so many questions, but um, maybe this is interesting to others as well. Uh, under the conditions of this easement, um on um timberland would any future timber harvest plan for this land then come under the purview of any city committee like the forest management committee um and and would those plans be you know subject to additional public input beyond um what a typical timber harvest plan outside um, the city limits uh, would be by uh, citizens in Arcata. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if the city um, did not take action um, and acquire this conservation easement by being an adjoining landowner, the, the city would be part of the referral process for um, input on a THB timber harvest plan or if a future non-industrial timber management plan or NTMP was developed for this parcel. And so there would be the um, uh, usual typical public opportunities through um, CAL FIRE to comment on those harvest plans, as well as the city being notified and therefore having the opportunity to consult with our forest management committee. 
um, the, the real um, benefit of a conservation easement for this property, um, besides um, conservation of habitat values and visual aesthetic values directly adjacent to the community forest, um, really ensuring contiguous wildlife corridors um, between the Arcata community forest and further east towards the Mad River, um, it really would be that the city would be able to work with the landowner to include language in the conservation easement um, that would really help guide the type of active forest management um, that both the landowner is interested in and the city would be um, would recommend for really um, trying to accelerate those more old growth characteristics um, on their on the current um, forest land. And, um, but just to further answer your question, um, the, the city would not have an active role in laying out the, um, a harvest unit. The landowner would work with um, their own uh, forestry consultants or however they choose to do that active management on their property. Um, the city would just be ensuring that any plans are consistent with the agreements outlined in the conservation easement. Thank you. Are there any other questions from the commission? If not, we'll open this to public comment. Are there any members of the public? No? They're I'm not. so surprised that no one's calling in. This is so important and exciting, actually. Okay, so public comment period is closed. Do we have any further questions or would someone like to make a motion to approve? Commissioner Mayor. I, I love making these motions. Um, <laughs> um, I move to approve um, resolution PC 2107. Oh, 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 04. Yes. Okay. 04, which got moved. Um, thank you. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion um, by Commissioner Mayor and a second by Commissioner Barstow. Can we get a roll call, please? Commissioner Figueroa? Aye. Uh, Commissioner Taggy? Aye. Commissioner White? Aye. Uh, Vice Chair Mayor? Aye. And Chair Vasade Elcock? Aye. Motion is approved. Um, Commissioner Davies, if you can hear me, you can, you're welcome to come back into the meeting now. And thank you, by the way. Yes. <laughs> so do we um, have any business items? There are none. Uh, correspondence or communications? I don't have any for uh, staff to, to commission at this point. Okay, if there's nothing else, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Bye.